Hello, booktube. I am Todd the Librarian. Bye. <laughs> I can't do it. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Now, this was actually given to me by my girlfriend. I probably wouldn't have gone out of my way to get it. From what I knew of it, I kind of knew it's been compared to things like Gone Girl and The Girl on the Train, both of which I didn't like. Um, but it does say on the front, from The Sun, The Sun newspaper, if you can call it a newspaper, and there's a quote on the front that says, Agatha Christie meets the girl on the train. And I like Agatha Christie and did not like the girl on the train, so I thought that'd be interesting. I'm going to read you the blurb and then I'm going to take you through it. This was meant to be the perfect trip. The Northern Lights, a luxury press launch on a boutique cruise ship. A chance for travel journalist Lo Blacklock to recover from a traumatic break-in that has left her on the verge of collapse. Except things don't go as planned. Woken in the night by screams, Lo rushes to her window to see a body thrown overboard from the next door cabin. But the records show that no one ever checked into that cabin, and no passengers are missing from the boat. Exhausted and emotional, Lo has to face the fact that she may have made a mistake. Either that, or she is now trapped on a boat with a murderer. And on the front it says, a passenger is missing, but was she ever on board at all? So, <laughs> I, I feel as though everyone's going to be expecting me to really slag this one off, because again, I didn't like a lot of the books it's been compared to. And it very much left me with mixed feelings. So, on the one hand, it did keep me turning the pages. I actually read this in like just over a day and I did want to know what happened. At the same time, there were a lot of problems with it that I noticed along the way. Um, I'm going to take you through it and we'll look at some of the highs and the lows and then I will give it my rating at the end. The traumatic break-in that left her on the verge of collapse happens within the first couple of pages and I don't think it has any relevance to the rest of the story. I certainly didn't pick up on any re relevance. So I think that was kind of just done to, I don't know, to, to hook you in right from the beginning. So you're like, oh, why is she getting burgled? And then it just happens, turns out to be a random act. A lot of the characters just do weird things as well. So towards the start, her boyfriend, Judah, turns down a job in America and then gets angry at her because he's turned this job down to stay with her and she doesn't know what she wants. But he didn't ask her or anything. He just turned this job down and then was like, it's your fault. And it's like, mm, no, not really, mate. I must say, I didn't really like any of the characters. Um, but I never usually do in this kind of book. So <laughs> I don't even know if you're supposed to. One of my big issues with this book is actually the representation of anxiety. Because personally, I suffer from anxiety myself. And I don't know whether Ruth Ware does or not. But the way that her character talks about it... I don't agree with some of the things that she was saying and um, again I feel as though this this break in at the beginning was done so that this character could then suffer from anxiety problems bear in mind this character is supposed to have anxiety herself she says um, was I turning into someone who had panic attacks about walking home from the tube or staying the night alone in the house without their boyfriend no fuck that I would not be that person I, you know I don't know what she means by I, I won't be that person it's like well <laughs> You know, it's not something that you have control over. It's like being, I will not be that person who has cancer. It's like, well, it was here there was an entire page of her putting her makeup on, which I guess was important because then she has to borrow some mascara, but I feel like we could have lifted a lot of that detail. There's a scene where uh, all the men are fat and all the women are skinny. Let me see if I can find the quote. So this bloke has said to her that all the men look extremely well fed and it says, We gazed around the room together. I had to agree with him when it came to the men. There was a little knot in the far corner who looked like they could survive for several weeks off their fat reserves if we were ever shipwrecked. The women were a different story though. They all, notice all, they all had that lean polished look that spoke of hot Bikram yoga and a macrobiotic diet and they didn't look like they'd survive long if the ship went down. Maybe they could eat one of the men. Oh yeah, then there's the weird scene where her ex-boyfriend sexually assaults her. He, uh, let's see what he does. He moved closer and before I'd realised what he was about to do, he shoved his hand roughly down the front of my dress. I felt a streak of pain as his cufflinks dragged over my skin, and then his fingers closed over my bare breast and squeezed hard in a way that was presumably meant to be erotic. It wasn't. Then she knees him in the groin, then she cries for a bit, and then they're best friends again, and it just doesn't get mentioned again, and it's just really odd. I don't understand the point of that scene at all. I was trying to work out whether this is a retelling as well, because I'm sure I've 
read a similar story to this in the past, and I can't for the life of me think what it was. But, it, I mean, again, I guess it's a classic locked room mystery kind of thing. And so, to a certain extent, they're all going to be similar. But I'm sure, specifically, I've read a story about, you know, somebody going missing from a room they were meant to be in. And then there them being no record of them being there. Uh, there's a typo as well. I took the bathroom from where I... Hang on, where does it say? I took the bathroom from where it hung it on the... Considering it's meant to be a big bestseller, you'd think somebody would have picked up on that. But apparently not. There's some stereotypically bad English from a Polish lady as well. I can to help, Ivana said in a heavy Polish accent. There is a problem. And you can't tell me off for making that accent or attempting to make some sort of accent. Because I didn't write it. Then she finds tall people threatening. Where did that happen? As I looked at her, she put her hands on her hips, squaring up to me almost aggressively. Although I knew it was unfair to think that. It was her height that made the gesture seem threatening. So she's tall, so she's scary, I guess. And then, right, and then she thinks she's seen a murder and she goes around just knocking on everyone's doors and all this shit. And you're like, but now the murderer's gonna know as well. And it doesn't seem to cross her mind, especially considering she's like supposed to be so scared that she barely answer the door and all this stuff. Oh yeah, then there's the bit with all of her medication. She gets really angry at her ex-boyfriend for telling somebody that she takes medication, which I think for me, that betrays her own objection or whatever to, to medication like I, I take citalopram I don't mind people knowing that and I think that if I were to mind people knowing that it would stigmatize it like you know what I mean I it seems weird to me that it, she seems to this character seems to be go from one moment she's like oh how dare you do this just because I have anxiety or whatever and then the next moment she's slagging off people with anxiety, it's really weird. So the character, the main character says, You think just because of a handful of pills I'm a paranoid nut job who can't tell fact from fiction? You do know that there are hundreds of thousands of people on the same medication I take. But I think that's what the character herself thinks rather than she's accusing this dude of thinking that. And I don't think he thinks that. Oh yeah, then, then, so this is it. She gets really mad at him. Like, you spoke to Nielsen, don't look at me, how could you Ben? How long did it take you to spill all the beans, the breakdown, the meds, the fact that I almost lost my job? Did you tell him all that? Did you tell him about the days I couldn't get dressed, couldn't leave the house? And she gets really mad at him, this is the guy who sexually assaulted her, she's fine with the boob grab, but she's very upset that he told the captain of this boat that she takes medication. I just, uh... Then she goes to this spa thing as well, and she's like, oh no, I don't want to go and all this stuff. And she's meant to be, again, she's crippled with her anxiety or whatever. But she still goes. Like, couldn't you just not go? It's on the it it's on the itinerary for the cruise, but surely you can just not go. Just be like, I don't feel very well. She makes some odd decisions, and then she gets in a compromising position because of that bloody decision. And it's like, well, I, got, I wrote down as well, it does get pretty dumb and pretty melodramatic throughout. Like, there's So when she goes to this massage thing, somebody sneaks in and they blow on the mirror and then write, stop digging on the steam in the mirror. And it's just, ah, oh, like, oh, it's, it's kind of cringy how melodramatic that is. Like... <laughs> Oh yeah, then a bit later on, this person with anxiety, she starts, like, dissing uh, CBT, so Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. Okay. I remember what my CBT coach used to say. Calm, conscious breathing low, and progressive relaxation, one muscle at a time. Calm breathing, conscious relaxation. Calm and conscious, conscious and calm. I hated him even then. It barely took the edge off the panic attack even at the time, let alone now when there really was something to panic about. Now my problem here is that personally CBT hasn't helped me either, but I know people that it has helped and I just think attacking something that's designed to be beneficial to people like that, you know, what if somebody's reading this book and they have panic attacks of their own and then this then influences their decision to then not get CBT? I just, I think it's dangerous to do stuff like that. There's also a point at which the fucking award-winning photographer, who's had his photo on the cover of all these magazines, he, his uh, camera gets knocked into a pool and he loses all of his photos. And I'm like, what kind of award-winning photographer doesn't take backups? He even says, and the worst of it is, it's my own bloody fault. I should have backed up. Yes, you should have. You're an award-winning photographer. That's like lesson one in photography school. I back up my YouTube footage and I don't do this for a living. Like, what kind of... And it's on a memory card as well. It's not even difficult to back it up. Or you just plug it into your 
Mm, oh yeah, then she blames Ben. She she realizes this is a massive spoiler, but well, I guess most of this has been. But she realizes that he wasn't the murderer or whatever. And she blames him for it. She's like, stupid Ben. If he hadn't spent so many years belittling my feelings, and if he hadn't been so eager to spill the beans to Nielsen instead of supporting my story, then I might not have been so quick to jump to conclusions. It's like, well, you, you're the one who jumped to the conclusions. There was also a really odd scene that I couldn't understand what had happened. So she's been stopped by this policeman, and she realises that he's corrupt and all this stuff. So she wants to run away from him. And it says here, um, I saw the policeman replace the radio receiver and reach for something in his glove compartment. I had no idea what to do, blah, blah, blah. Screwing up my courage for the pain I knew I was coming, I began to run. Not up the road as before, but down, cross country, scrambling headlong down the vertiginous side of the fjord. That's it. You don't hear about this policeman again, but he was like 20 yards behind her. She twisted her ankle and she just runs cross country or whatever. So yeah, I guess he can't follow her in his car. You can follow her on foot though, and he's a trained policeman. She's a knackered woman who's just fucking jumped over the side of a boat and swam to shore. Like, she's already tired, she's twisted her ankle. And it just says, the next chapter is just, it was growing light when I realized I could go no further. So there's no mention of what happens with this policeman. I guess he just let her go. And then there's another twist at the end, which is super obvious, but you know, we I've ruined enough already. However, that's all of the, that's actually, actually, that's the notes that I made while reading through it. I didn't find much good stuff to highlight. But like I said, it did keep me reading and it was okay. It wasn't awful, despite all of this crap. Like, I'm kind of used to there being a lot of things wrong with books that, you know, become bestsellers anyway. So, it was, yeah, right. So the thing is, is that my expectations were really low. And this actually did exceed my expectations. Not by much, but it did exceed them. And so... That, coupled with the fact that I did, like, power through it, and I did want to know what was going to happen next. I just liked to take the piss out of it along the way, I suppose. So if you couple those two things to offset all of the bad, that's how I kind of arrived at my end rating for this. And that is, drumroll please. <laughs> and I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. It actually wasn't all that bad. I mean, there was a lot wrong with it, but... At the same time, you know, it's it's a thriller and it kept me reading, so it did its job. So fair play to Ruth Ware for that. I don't know that I would go out of my way to read any more of her books, though, so... I don't know, I guess we'll see. I'll, I'll see whether I see any decent reviews of, you know, In a Dark Dark Wood or whatever the hell else she's written. So anyway, that's what I thought of The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Be sure to let me know with a comment if you've read this book and if so, what you thought, whether you agree or disagree with any of my points. And in the meantime, please do hit subscribe for more videos and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye.